Welcome to Southwest Yard and Garden. I'm John White. Last week we talked about drip irrigation and we're going to spend today talking a little bit more about the application of drip irrigation. And again with me is Todd Arnold, manager of the Ewing store here in Las Cruces. And Todd, what is this brown roll here in front of us? This is uh, pressure compensating uh, drip tubing. Uh, subsurface drip, some people call it. It, al it also can be put on top of the ground, uh, but subsurface drip is what it is. Okay. Uh, um, what kind of applications would we use this in? Um, vegetable gardens. Uh, it can be used in turf applications. Um, it, like I said, it can be left on top of the ground or it can be buried. Uh, okay. Now if we go underground with the, with the line, do we encounter certain problems? underground that we wouldn't above ground? Not really. Uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't matter if the uh, small uh, emitter that's in the tube is uh, in an upward position or a down position. Uh, each time the water flows through the emitter, it does flush the opening, keeping it clear of debris. And uh, just like the drip we talked about last week, this also needs a pressure regulator and a Y filter or strainer to uh, keep all the impurities out. Okay. Now this is an inline system and we were talking about what a inline emitter system means. Yeah. Right. The uh, emitter is built right into the pipe. When they make the pipe, the emitter is uh, placed inside the pipe as they extrude it. Um, and it's a pressure compensating emitter just like the uh, separate ones that we talked about last week. Okay. Just so the water the pressure fills the brown line and then that water goes through this path on the emitter and then comes out. Right. This particular uh, one will emit uh, 0.9 gallons per hour. Okay. And so in an application where you need very even spacings and stuff like a vegetable garden, this would be good or turf applications where you have your emitter spaced at, at precise settings. I guess one of the big things when you're using any type of drip irrigation system and maybe even with any kind of sprinkler system, we do want to stay with components that are meant for those particular systems and not go mixing and matching. Right. You do need to stay with the same brands because uh, this particular brand here has its own fittings and, and these fittings may or may not fit another manufacturer's hose and vice versa their fittings may not fit this hose. Okay. Uh, when we're using coiled uh, poly pipe, whether it's for this type of drip application or just setting out poly pipe, uh, if we kink the line, is that good or bad? No, you really need to keep the kinks out of it because uh, especially when you're unrolling it, if you're burying it or if you're leaving it on the, on the surface, it's very important to make sure you don't have any kinks. Um, one thing, if you're going to leave it out on the top of the ground, it uh, would be a good idea to uh, use a stick pin to uh, hold it in place okay. so that uh, it doesn't encounter a kink later on if, in case some of the plant material gets moved around or the hose gets moved around. Okay. Now these applications are good for plants that are at pretty regular spacings and stuff. Now if we're looking at shrubs and, and trees, this application is really not that good. What do we want to look at then? Right, then you would want to move to a uh, multi-outlet emitter so you can feed the root zone of that plant. Okay, say we have a young plant that's, that's planted, we have a single outlet emitter that will help to keep that plant alive maybe for the first year or so, but as those roots begin to grow out and the plant begins to enlarge, then we want to go to a, to a multi-outlet so that we're either running spaghetti tubes off of these out so that we're encouraging that root system to, to grow out more. And then we get down to some of the larger um, systems down at the end that are, what are these Todd, about a eight outlet? That's an eight outlet emitter. And then we have one, these kind of look like spacecraft. They do. They uh, also come in different gallons per hour. Um, this particular unit comes from about a uh, gallon and a half up to about uh, 10 gallons per hour. And uh, that one you would want for a large tree or a large shrub uh, to uh, put the spaghetti line out to the root zone of the tree. Okay. And this one here? That one is uh, a little unique. It's also an eight outlet emitter, but uh, this is actually a multi-emitters inside this housing. 
which can be changed out. You can go from a half gallon per hour emitter to a 24 gallon per hour emitter if you wanted to feed, uh, say, two or three shrubs off of this uh, one outlet em or this one emitter, you could do that. Or okay. if you had this on a tree that was growing, you could go in and uh, change out just the, uh, just the small modules just to uh, give it more water. Todd, that does give it a lot of application. Sure does, John. Now, what are some of the things that you see in your line of work here as far as, as problems with uh, drip irrigation applications? Um, some not installed correctly, and a, a lot of it is run times, the amount of time that the uh, that the uh, emitter is being ran for. Okay. Well, since the drip system's putting in or putting out water in gallons per hour, the system should be run for longer lengths, like hours, rather than minutes. That's really important. And also, as as plants grow, we need to make sure those emitters are put out where the root systems are are going to, so that we do keep those plants healthy and growing good. That's correct. But the big thing is we are saving some water because we are putting precise amounts of water down where the plant needs them. That's correct. Exactly what the plant needs when it needs it. Okay. Well, Todd, thank you very much for being on Southwest Yard and Garden and helping us with our questions on drip irrigation. Thank you, John. I enjoyed it. <laughs>